2021 is already a record year for murders in Albuquerque, and we're not even halfway through. This past weekend, there were two killings in less than 12 hours, and the second death brought the total so far to 50. That's twice as many murders as we had at this point last year. Now, Albuquerque's police chief says many cities are seeing similar rise in violent crime this year, including Portland, where a new study by the Major Cities Chief Association found the homicide rate had jumped by more than 1,100% this year. That study found our homicide rate up 75%. But again, that was before this weekend's violent outburst. And Dan, we've been talking about this for a long time, about violence in Albuquerque here on the show and other places, and yet the numbers continue to climb. What are we missing as a city? What's, what's your take on this? Yeah, I just, I mean, there's, we don't have enough time to have that conversation, Gene. It's, I hear you. I mean, it, it, it's a problem. I mean, we have an unbelievable problem with, you know, getting mental health services to people in this state. Uh, they all seem to get dumped in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. and this is the place it comes. You know, when folks get released from incarceration, this seems to be a, a key place to drop them off with no real, you know, opportunities and hopes to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, and all of this, and, you know, we're unveiling a task force to go after drag racers in the streets, right? I mean, you know, look, I, I you know, drag racing in the streets is a bad deal, but you know, we've got to we've got to get serious. Let me let me ask you, let me ask you this. Mexico. Let me ask you this, Dan. You know, the, the violence intervention program spokesperson. I, I, you particularly want to, your opinion here. Says less than 0.1 percent of the population is behind the majority of the violent crimes here in Albuquerque. Wouldn't that say this would be easier to get your arms around if you know who these people are? Down to less than one percent. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it depends on. It, you know, I don't know where they got their statistics, so it depends on you know, what the answer is to that, right? If you're going to say it's all one ethnic group or it's all one gender, or it's all, I mean, it becomes a really difficult situation to, to, to address that. But we've seen the continued fail policies in Albuquerque, right? We looked at what they did with the, you know, with the minis, right? They were going to shut down the one gas station and let them sell them three blocks away. Mm -hmm. We just, we seem to have a very reactive response to crime in the city mm -hmm. and not a very proactive response. And, and, and I'm not saying this to be, you know, a platitude. I, I think if anything can bring people together across party lines, it's realizing that there's a crime problem. We have to have a, a list. we have to have a significant conversation that includes not only incarceration but rehabilitation. Gotcha. I mean, the answer can't be lock everybody up. The answer's got to be how do you find out? How do you get the real bad guys off the streets? Right. And how do you get the non bad guys back to being productive members of society? Mm -hmm. And it seems it's always an either or conversation, not only in New Mexico but across the country. We're either all about locking people up or we're all about letting people out, and we've got to get off that 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 mark. I hear that, Eric. You know, some people are saying that defund the police and other efforts are actually hampering police efforts out there. Is this a Trojan horse? Is this just, or red herring, probably a better uh, way to say it. You know, what's the true feeling out there with this kind of thing? I, you know, I think it's, again, that's a convenient sort of uh, talking point from folks who want to kind of exploit that as a political message. Mm -hmm. The research on this is actually pretty well known. You know, the one of the biggest predictors is uh, of homicide rates, which is what we started out talking about, is how many guns you have in your community, right? How liberal your gun policy is not the opposite. So um, so some of the folks on the right who really are, you know, including Sheriff Gonzalez, who's been a, a big, you know, you know, First Amendment city or Second Amendment city, uh, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to protect everybody's mm -hmm. rights to own gun guns. And even if you listen to some folks in law enforcement, um, you know, the fact that we've had so many law enforcement has so much problems assuming everybody's armed. And so you have more guns, you have more police get shot, you have more uh, people shooting each other and killing each other, you have higher, higher uh, lethal domestic violence rates. So, so we, we like to talk about good guys and bad guys or bad hombres and all this that the truth is the very folks who were talking about being tough on crime are I think largely responsible for the, for the proliferation of guns in this community and all across the country. I agree with Dan. Drug, inter, uh, you know, drug issues. There's a big addiction problem in this community, like a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. uh, we absolutely have to address the mental health crisis, which is another part of this, right? And then the, all of the underlying issues. So nobody's pro crime. I mean, everybody wants to feel safe in their communities. But the, the question is again, and I think this is going to play out in this upcoming mayor's race. I think it's going to play out in the 2022 elections. Is is you know right. is if 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 this message we heard from Mark Moore's and Republicans all crime all the time and you know we've got to lock them up lock them up and we don't need we don't need cameras we don't need body cameras um, we uh, we just have to lock everybody up is to 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 
to Dan's earlier point, I think that's not a good strategy. I mean, we have some serious systemic issues that we have to look at and try to address, mm -hmm. right? Including, uh, you know, the lack of, of, of opportunities, the lack yeah. of mental health services, the lack of drug interdiction I mean, or drug uh, treatment and uh, rehabilitation centers. So those are all things we can address. And I really feel strongly that we have to have an honest conversation about the proliferation of guns here and the fact that people in law enforcement who, who know this is a problem, uh, Sheriff Gonzalez is chief among them, that they should be the ones saying, look, my people are people aren't safe because there's this proliferation of guns. And mm -hmm. and that's and people are, you know, most of these crimes, if you look at the data, they're not dying from beatings. They're not dying from stabbings they're dying from gun, uh, you know, the gun injuries. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point there. You know, merit and mental health issues has come up from both these fellows already and resources have been a big issue for a long time here in New Mexico. You know, it's going to be more crucial coming out of the 14 months of isolation, I should add, from COVID-19. Are we ready to deal with all of this? When you look at the landscape of what the city's going to do, the county's looking to do, this new violence intervention program that was referenced a second ago, is it a little bit under? Are we in the sweet spot here and making progress? What's, what's your overall take on it? Well, you know, first of all, the statistic is, you know, some some cities, their uh, homicide rates gone up, you know, 1100 percent. Ours has only gone up 75. Well, our homicide rate was already high. So thank you. The thing that no one has addressed uh, across administration, different administrations, DOJ reforms, no one's really tried to fix the culture of law enforcement here. Yeah. If you look at um, the, the hostility to the DOJ reforms, uh, the millions of dollars we're spending on it and uh, still very little being done. The opportunity to bring in a fresh approach from a different city that has done much to uh, resolve its violent crime issues. Um, and instead we hired within our own. If you look at um, the systemic issues of prosecuting uh, violent crime in the mm -hmm. DA office, whether mm -hmm. it was Brandon or Torres, um, we have um, a cultural problem with managing crime and no one um seems willing to address that head on we mm. keep doing the same thing with the same people and the same management mm -hmm. and until we really take that on and that is uh the mayor that is the police union that is the chief of police that is embracing the doj reform that is competent um prosecution that is police officers showing up to hearings to avoid dismissal of charges that's huge Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think what we just saw in the, the uh, Raver murder uh, acquittal, um, when we can't prosecute uh, adequately or competently, but we still think, you know, we have a DA who still thinks he can run for AG, we've got a problem. Yeah. And I, I think it's, it, and adding to proliferation uh, of weapons, poverty, a poor education system, dropouts, unemployment, all of this adds up to uh, where we are at uh, a tipping point of uh, an, uh, un an intolerable homicide rate in Albuquerque. And we've been talking about it for years on this show, but yep. no one in the city seems to really address the problem. It's a frightening rate compared to where we were last year. It's unbelievable. We're out of time, unfortunately. This is one of those ongoing topics we'll revisit before long. Thanks to all our panelists. A few final thoughts in a moment.